And it's Coach Reeves. Today we're going to do some word problems. I know that scares you a little bit, but we're going to do ones with quadratic motion. Okay? Honestly, these aren't that hard. All we have to do is set up an equation in the calculator, and the calculator will do most of the work. Okay? Let's get started. I promise you it won't be that bad. All right. So we're going to give you an equation that says y equals negative 16x squared or y equals negative 4.9x squared. We're going to use the one with negative 16 if we measure things in feet. If the height's in feet, if our velocity is feet per second, anything that deals with feet, we're going to use y equals negative 16x squared. If our problems is used meters, then we'll use negative 4.9x squared. Look at the V with the subscript O, or zero. That's going to stand for initial velocity, and H with the subscript is going to be initial height. Okay, same thing with the meters, initial velocity, initial height. A couple of things we want to remember. If the problem does not specify a starting height, it will consider to be starting from the ground. We will use negative 16 or negative 4.9 because we want our graph to open downward. All right, we're going to deal with throwing an object or shooting an object in the air or maybe jumping, but eventually we're going to come back down to the ground. We're dealing with gravity. So when something is thrown in the air, it's going to come back down and we're going to get a parabola that opens downward. We're going to use a negative x squared term. Okay. Next thing, if the problem asks for a measurement before an object hits the ground or the water, we will need a second equation. Now I'm going to work a couple of problems with deal with this so you'll understand what I'm talking about. But if here's ground level and we launch a rocket, it goes in the air, and I ask you to try to measure something before it hits the ground, somewhere in the air, I'm going to need a second equation for, to measure this height above the ground. You'll understand once you see it, I promise, okay? Before we get into the problems, you need to understand, I'm a math teacher, I'm not an art teacher. Please don't make fun of my pictures. All right, here we go. So if you read question number one, this is Jason. Jason's in Acapulco. He's gonna jump off of a cliff into the water. The cliff is 480 feet high. If you read the problem, he says he has an initial velocity of 16 feet per second. All these feet, feet, feet things mean we're going to use negative 16. So my equation is going to start out y equals negative 16x squared. His initial velocity is 16 feet per second. So we're going to say plus 16x, 15x feet per second. We know what the initial height is. He's jumping off a cliff that's 480 feet high. So there's what we're going to put in our calculator. We're going to graph that equation. Before we go too far, let's talk about this. Jason jumps. He gets to the water. Now we're going to say whether you're at water level or whether you're at ground level, this is the same thing as the x-axis. We're looking where he touches the x-axis. We said that this was an x-intercept, but we also found it as a zero. We did menu, analyze, and we found our zero. This is what we're going to look for right here. Before we go too far also, is if we have an ordered pair, the x value will stand for time, the y value will stand for height. x is time, y is height. So if Jason jumps and he comes down to the water, his height his height will be zero. We will try to look for the time, how long that Jason is in the air. That's what we're looking for, the x value, the time. That's the things where calculator is going to help us find. All right? Now, what are we going to ask you? All right, on this question, we're going to ask you time to the maximum height. What is the maximum height or its highest point? And time to where he hits the water. Okay? So we'll just go to our calculator and see if we can calculate these things. So on this, I've listed the equation here to help me. I'm going to type in negative 16x squared plus my initial velocity of 16x plus 
plus my initial height of 480. And we're going to hit enter. I can't see the top of my graph. So do me a favor though, please do not go menu, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and make the graph really skinny. It makes it hard to read values. What we will do is just adjust the window, the maximum Y value. We're gonna change our Y max so we can see this. So we're gonna to go to our calculator, we're gonna say menu, window, we're gonna adjust the window settings. We're gonna change our Y max, okay? So we're going to delete this, get this out of the way. Now the clip, the clip that he jumped off of is at 480. So this has to be a minimum of 480. I don't know how high Jason can jump, but I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to give him a buffer. I'm going to say uh, he can jump. We're going to make it so I can see everything. I'm going to change my number to 510. Now, if you pick the wrong number, it's okay. Just repeat the process and change the number till you get to where you can see the graph. All right, so we're going to put in 510, and I'm going to hit enter, and yes, I can see the top of my graph, all right? Now, this point right here at the y-axis, this is where he's going to start his jump from. All this, remember all this back here, this is negative time. You can't go back in time, so all this stuff does not matter. You just kind of ignore that. All right, so we need to find this max value, so we're going to say menu. We're going to analyze, and we're going to look for the maximum value. So we're going to move this to the left, to the right, and this is my max. Look what it gave me. If you remember this, we just said that the X value stands for time. The Y value stands for height. So it's going to take me 0.5 seconds to reach my maximum height of 480 feet or 84 feet. Okay. But then the other thing we want to find out is how long that Jason was in the air before he got to the water. So we need to find this zero. So we're going to say menu, analyze, we're going to find our zero. We're going to move this to the left of where he hits the water, to the right, and look what it says. This is your time, and this is your height. This is my time. My time is going to be six seconds. Oops, sorry. My time, this is going to be six seconds. This is my height. My height is zero because he's at water level. Let's go back to our problem. Move this up. Time to the maximum height. You remember what we said? The time to reach your max. Time to reach your max was 0.5 seconds. The time to reach, or excuse me, the highest point that he reached was 484 feet. How long was he in the air before he hit the water? We said that that was six seconds, okay? So you didn't have to do a whole lot of calculations. All you have to do is manipulate your calculator once you put a graph in, okay? Let's try another problem. All right, let's read this. Let me read this to you. It says a toy rocket is launched vertically upward from ground level with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. Okay, so we've got a toy rocket. He's launched from ground level and he's going to come back to the ground. It says ground level, my initial velocity is 128 feet per second. So that tells me we have to use negative 16. So we go y equals negative 16 x squared plus my initial velocity of 128 feet per second, but we're shooting it off from ground level. So my initial height is zero. Do I need a plus zero at the back end? No. You can put it, but you, you don't need it. So you can ignore the plus zero, okay? So we're gonna shoot this off and we're gonna ask you, a couple of questions. We're going to ask you how long for it to hit the ground. When it hits the ground, we're looking for a zero. We just got through doing this, so we're okay with this. We're finding the zero. We're going to hold off on B just for a second. Okay. How long until we get to the maximum height? We just got through doing that. What was the maximum height? We just got through doing that. We'll do it again. 
but we've already done those. The new one is this right there. How many seconds will it be 112 feet above the ground? So here's ground level. We shoot the rocket way up in the air, but they want to know how long it's going to be at 112 feet. We're asking you to measure something before it hits the ground. We need a second equation. This is what I'm talking about. So, first equation. First equation is the projectile. This is the arc, the parabola. But we need a second equation because we want to measure it. So we need this horizontal line, and my second equation will be y equals 112. So when I ask you to measure something, you're going to give me an equation of a horizontal line. You're going to give me y equals some kind of number. In this case, my height is 112. That's my second equation. Okay, let's go to the calculator. Let me clean out the stuff. And we're going to go, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get a new document. And we're going to go to graphs. The red, the green dot. All right, and I want to put in my equation. Now, here's the equation from my paper. I'm going to say I need a negative 16x squared plus my initial velocity plus 128x. That's my equation for my parabola. And we're going to hit enter. I can't see the top of it. So what do we have to do? We need to change the y max, the y max of my graph. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to say menu, I'm going to say window, change my window setting. How high do I want to go? Well, I'm going to measure at 112 feet, but I know I need to go way higher than that to see everything. I have the luxury of already working the problem, but what I said earlier is if you pick the wrong number, just repeat the process and try a new number, okay? All right, so I'm going to change my y max. Let's see if I delete this. I'm going to change this to 300, uh, maybe 310, 300. I'll go 300, okay? And we're going to hit enter. So I can see the tip top of my graph. That's a good thing, okay? But I need that second equation. How do you find that second equation? I'm going to hold off on that for just for a second. I'm going to find my zero first. Okay, we're going to find out how long the rocket was in the air. We're going to find out the max. And then we'll go find that second equation. We're going to put that second equation in. All right, let's do this. Let's go menu, analyze. We're going to look for a zero. We're going to go to the left, to the right, and we're going to find out that number right there. What does that tell me? Well, it says that this is my time, this is my x value, and we're at eight seconds. That's how long my rocket is in the air, a total of eight seconds, because this is when its height is zero, that's when it's back at the ground. Let's do another one. Let's say menu, analyze, maximum, to the left of the vertex, to the right of the vertex, and we look at that, and what does that say? It's going to take four seconds, because x is time, four seconds to reach a maximum height of 256. Got it? Max height of 256, and it took four seconds to get there. But let's go to that middle question, that second question they're asking. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to say tab. Right above control, we're going to hit tab. We're going to put in our second equation. And we're going to put in our second equation of 112. We're going to hit enter. And I want to know, my rocket takes off, I want to know, my rocket gets to 112 feet, it's still in the air, and I want to know how long that it stays above 112 feet. I don't want to know how long it is. Now how long, what does that mean? We're talking about time. And what letter stands for time? X. I need to look for this X value here, and I need to look for this X value there, and then we're going to subtract my two X values, my big number minus my little number, okay? So let me erase this so it doesn't mess up my calculator. I'm afraid sometimes it does. All right, so what happens? I need an intersection 
of the blue graph and the red graph. So we're going to do this. Menu, analyze. We're going to look for an intersection. I want to see the intersection to the left here, to the right here, and there's my intersection. There's my first guy right there. Okay? It took me one second. Once we took off, it took me one second to get to the height of 112 feet. Then I do this again. Menu, analyze, intersection, to the left, to the right, and look at my intersection over here. When it came back down, it was seven seconds, and I had a height of 112. Remember what I said, we need to find out how long it was from here to here, how long it was above 112 feet. So we said that we were gonna subtract, we're gonna subtract our X values, and it tells me six seconds. It was for six seconds that it was at at least 112 feet. So let's go back to our problem. How long till it hit the ground? Do you remember what we said? We said eight seconds. How many seconds will it be 112 feet above the ground? We subtracted the seven minus one and we said that it was for six seconds. For six seconds, it would be above 112 feet. How long until we reach the max height? How long, what was my time? We said it would take four seconds to reach my maximum height. And then what did we say the maximum height was? We said the maximum height was 256 feet. Let's try it again, let's try another problem. All right, so we're gonna to go to problem number 10, okay? Let's read problem number 10 together. It says an amateur rocketry club is holding a competition. There is cloud cover starting at 1,000 feet. If a rocket is launched with an initial velocity of 300 feet per second, how long will the rocket be out of sight? Same thing there. How long was the rocket above 112 feet? How long will the rocket be out of sight? Okay. How long will it take for the rocket to disappear into the clouds? Those are my two questions. How long will the rocket be out of sight? How long until the rocket disappears into the clouds? So I've got to find out how long it's up here and then how long it's going to take to get to right here, that first spot. Those are my two questions. Okay. Let's think about what they asked. Well, first of all, they're talking in feet. So I'm going to use negative 16 again. I'm gonna say that y equals negative 16 x squared. It said we have an initial velocity of 315 plus 315 x. Where a rocket is taking off from ground level so I don't need a plus zero at the back end. There is my equation. But I'm gonna measure something before it hits the ground. So I need a second equation. What is my second equation? We're gonna know where the cloud bank is at 1,000 feet. My second equation is gonna be y equals 1,000. So let's go to the calculator again. Let's change this stuff up. Let's erase this stuff and get it out of the way. We're gonna go home, we're gonna go new, we're gonna say no, and we're gonna to go to graph. And my equation says this y equals negative 16x squared plus 315x. We're going to hit enter. This rocket went so high so far, I can't even see where it goes down. I don't see the second line over here. I've got to change my x max and I have to change my y max. So let's go to our menu. We're gonna change the window, window settings. The first thing I wanna change right here is my Y max. I can't see it, so I'm gonna change it. I wanna go further out that way, so I'm gonna change it to a 25. Okay, and again, if you, if you, if you put it in the wrong number, just go back and try another number. All right, we're gonna change our Y max. Let me delete this out of the way. 
Alright, I have the luxury, I've already worked the problem, but I'm going to pick the number 1600. Okay? And we're going to hit enter. There. I can see the maximum, I can see where it hits this. Okay? But none of those questions they had dealt with how long or whatever the maximum was. They're talking about where it hits the cloud bank. I need that second equation. And the second equation, let's go to tab. And my second equation was 1,000. I hit enter. There's my second equation. Now the two questions they asked were, how long was it out of sight, which means here's the cloud bank, how long was it above the cloud bank, and how long did it take to get to this first spot? Either way, we're going to have to find these intersections. Just, on the pre just like on the previous problem. We're going to go Menu, Analyze. We're going to look for an intersection. We're going to go to the left, to the right, and we're going to get this right here. That's a crazy number, but this is the scientific notation for 1,000. Don't panic. That just means we're going to move our decimal place three times. If you move the decimal place three times, you're going to be at 1,000. So don't panic if this comes up, okay? But what does this say? The X value, the X value is 3.98. That's how long. It's going to take 3.98 seconds before it disappears into the cloud bank. Now we're going to repeat the process and find this X value. Let me bring this down just a little bit. There we go. Menu, analyze, intersection, to the left, to the right, and this is my intersection right here. So what will I do? I will subtract those two values, all right? We're gonna subtract these two values, borrow, 17 minus eight is nine, borrow, that leaves me with, well, that's just 14. Excuse me, 14 minus 9 is 5. You're just going to get, oh, I'm sorry, there's a 7. Whoops, sorry, too fast. Let me get a line of my decimal points. I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to borrow and get a 10. And we're going to say 10 minus 8 is 2. Borrow. Could have used the calculator. 17 minus 9 is 8. Point, and then you're going to get 11.82 11.82 seconds that it's above 1,000 feet. Okay? All right, let's go back to our problem. Remember our numbers, 3.98, 11.82. How long will it take for the rocket to be out of sight? Or, excuse me, to be out of sight, we said what? 11.82 seconds for this problem and then we come down how long until the rocket disappears and we said 3.98 seconds here's the thing most everything is done on the calculator setting up your equation and then manipulating the calculator to find a maximum height or a zero value or maybe an intersection where it hits a certain a second equation. Okay? Just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of setup, but most of the problems are going to involve just those characteristics or those points right there. It's not that hard once you get started. Okay? Please try the worksheet. There may be a couple of problems that you have questions on. Please don't hesitate to contact or ask us so we can help you. Good luck.